Hello, and welcome to the Coventer MEMS Plus demonstration. This demo will illustrate the major functionality available in Coventer's newest software package, MEMS Plus. MEMS Plus is a complete design environment which allows a MEMS design engineer to generate a fully parameterized MEMS device in an intuitive 3D CAD environment. The model can then be imported into Cadence Virtuoso incorporated into an IC schematic and simulated as a circuit element. MEMS Plus also allows for the seamless import of parameterized layout cells or p-cells for use in the Virtuoso layout environment. This demo will illustrate all this functionality using three classes of common MEMS devices. We will construct this fully parameterized MEMS gyroscope in MEMS Plus Innovator. Here we see the MEMS gyroscope model that we'd like to create within MEMS Plus. I'll highlight that MEMS Plus initially consists of three tabs. The first tab, the materials database, is where you'll define your materials as well as specify all of the material properties. Here I have aluminum highlighted and you can see that for any of the material properties required you can define either a hard-coded value or your material properties can be an expression of a variable. So in this case, the electrical conductivity is a function of temperature defined by the variable T. So once your materials are, are set up, you can proceed to describe your process in the Process Editor tab. Here we have a very simple process, series of deposition and straight cuts. And for this particular example, we have an electrode layer, which will be patterned. It will be covered by a sacrificial material, followed by the actual structural layer, which was then cut, and then the sacrificial layer is removed. With our process and materials defined, we're ready to create some MEMS geometry. In order to give you an idea of the components required for this particular example, we've got a single rigid plate suspended above sensory electrodes by four tethers oriented at its corners. The rigid plate is also flanked by two comb structures on either side. In order to get started, what we're going to do is highlight all of the existing geometry and delete it so that we can start from scratch. Now I do have a series of design variables listed here in the variables tree that I can use when defining all of my different geometry components. MEMS Plus is a right mouse button driven GUI and so within the components tree here I can simply start adding different elements. We'll start with a rigid plate and this rigid plate can be comprised of any number of differently shaped segments. For our example we'll start with a rectangular segment. When you select to add a rigid plate or any other type of component this property table appears wherein everything that is required appears in red and anything that appears in black is optional. So what's required is to specify a layer for our rectangular segment. Now the layers here are populated based on the process that we've defined in the process editor. So we'll select the mechanical layer. For the size, I'm going to start typing in a variable name. And you can see that the drop-down menu auto-completes my variable name based on what variables are, are already previously available within the variable table. So for the size of this plate, I'll use plate size X and alternately plate size Y. I can click Apply, zoom out a bit, and you can see that our geometry has been generated. Now I'd like some release edge holes for this uh, particular plate structure, so I'm going to add some perforations. Again, I have some previously defined variables for both the plate hole size as well as the plate spacing. Click apply or OK in this case and we're done generating our rigid plate. Now from here what we'd like to do is have some electrodes located beneath our rigid plate so we simply add an electrode and for this the fixed layer becomes the electrode layer defined again from our process. Now I don't want the electrode layer to have exactly the same size as the rigid plate above it and so I'll use these protrude parameters to slightly modify the electrode size. 
click OK. If I rotate the model, you can see that the sense electrode has been located beneath our rigid plate. All right, now with our rigid plate defined, we can go ahead and add some straight comb segments. Again, what is required is in red, so we'll just go through and fill them out. Mechanical layer, the total line width in this case is plate size X, plate line width, and you can see here that I actually have an expression for one of the inputs made of two separate variables. We'll use comb finger width, comb finger pitch. We're going to specify the origin of this to be located along the edge of our plate structure. And then finally, we have some comb finger lengths. Apply. And you can see that by default, comb fingers are oriented aligned with the x-axis. In our particular example, we would like them to be aligned with the y-axis. That is simply as, as simple as returning to the local frame and changing the in-plane angle to 90. And you can see that our comb structures have been created. With our rotors complete, we'd now like to add a straight comb stator. Again, what is required, we'll just fill this in. This is the, the fingertip to plate gap, and that can be defined using this combination of variables. And finally, we'll need the comb finger <coughs> anchor width, apply, and our stators have been generated. Perhaps we would like a sensing electrode beneath our combs here, and so we simply add bottom electrode on the electrode layer, click OK, and they'll rotate so you can see that that geometry has been generated. All right, now once you've d generated one instance of, of your model within MEMS Plus and you intend to replicate it, there are a series of built-in functions that allow you to do this quite easily. So we would like our straight comb to be oriented on both sides, sort of flanking this middle structure. So that's simply a matter of mirroring the device. And there we go. Our geometry has been created. Now the final components that we'd like to add are the uh, tethers, which support this structure. And so back at the components tree, we can add, we'll add a local frame. And to that local frame, we'll actually add another nested local frame. Now, this local frame is simply going to be a way for us to easily construct our beams uh, once, once we start defining our beam tethers. So we would like this to be located along the edge of the plate, sort of an origin on the, on the edge of the plate that will make our life a little easier later on. If I click OK, if I highlight this, you can see where this origin is located. Now to this nested local frame, we're going to add a beam path. Again, what is required is in red, so we'll just simply go through. Beam width, we have a variable set up for that. Now the starting point is 0, 0. But keep in mind, this is 0, 0 with respect to the local frame within which this is nested. So 0, 0 will actually be mounted on the edge of our plate here. And the second endpoint that we'll want is a certain length oriented along the x-axis, so we'll leave y at zero. And then we can add another element, which we will want oriented to be aligned with the y-axis. So the x-coordinate will remain the same, and the y-coordinate will be here. And you can see that our tether has been created. As I mentioned, once you've generated one type of geometry that you intend to replicate multiple times, you simply need to enter the right-click menu, and you can either replicate, in this case we'll mirror about X, and then we can select both and mirror about Y. And there you have it, your MEMS gyroscope geometry has been created.